Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we try to make sense of this crazy Arizona market, and we continue to talk about water. So I thought, well, let me do a little digging and find out what our two gubernatorial candidates are saying on how they're going to address the uh, water shortage that we have now and what their short-term and long-term plans are. Now, nobody's going to make a decision on who they vote for just based on their water plans, but it's important to know what they're going to do and see how far off they are, if they're far off. I'm definitely not going to endorse one candidate over another. And uh, there are some differences in what they want to do. None of them is stark. Um, as you know, we have Carrie Lake, who's the GOP candidate. She used to be a newscaster for Channel 10, and she got out of the business and decided to run for governor. And she is her and I'm getting this information off their websites and did a lot of reading on them here today. And she has um, pretty much the same conservation plans as Katie Hobbs. Now, Katie Hobbs used to be, I believe, our Secretary of State. Um, but they both kind of lean the same way on conservation. Carrie Lake goes into a little bit more detail on things that you've heard and projects that are out there and she she seems to be leaning more heavily towards projects something like building more dams on the salt and verde rivers to uh to hold more water uh building more systems to capture uh storm water uh putting covers over our canal system to conserve more water and keep it from evaporating um, none of that is cheap and, of course, desalinization. Uh, Carrie Lake is pushing desalinization, uh, such as the one in Carlsbad, California, and the big plants in Israel. Uh, she is a big proponent of that. Um, she has already met with water experts, she said, and has kind of formed her opinion on what she would like to do. The other one, you've heard it before, too. Another option we will explore is pipelining fresh water from both the Missouri and Mississippi ri River basins. She goes on to say these are proven technologies. They work. What will the cost be? Right now, we don't know. In either case, the cost and scale will require Arizona to forge agreements with federal governments, other Western states, and Mexico. Whatever the price tag ends up being, it will be far less than the cost of future without water that we need to survive. Now, if I get over to Katie Hobbs, um, she starts out the same way, talking about conserving and managing waters but water but she moves into more of a task force uh, solution in other words she really didn't go into a lot of detail on well i would build this and build that she didn't say anything about a pipeline didn't say anything about desalinization but she did say that uh, she would create a dedicated long-term expert leadership team through the water and energy innovation initiative and this initiative will be responsible for coordinating programs to address water scarcity, quality, water infrastructure, implementing conservation efforts, streamline government agencies' water efforts. Streamlining is always a good word. So she wants to put together a task force that has a very specific goal in mind. So she's not really going to go out on a limb right now and say, well, I'm going to do this, this, and this, to the degree that Carrie Lake did. Ironically, they're probably both going to do just about the same thing. It all depends on who can get the money for it. Do it the fastest. But she does want to modernize the Arizona Ground, Groundwater Management Act. Legislation that was groundbreaking at the time, but 42 years later, it hasn't kept up, kept up with the continued growth. So she wants to revamp that agency. But when I look at that, I mean... Um, it says that uh, she wants to allocate up to $5 million per year in the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality funding for cleaning up toxic F PFAS chemicals, which will never break down in the environment and leak into the water system. So she's really got three pillars on her uh, platform for water, the, the biggest being conservation. She does mention drip irrigation for farming, which is great. There's another system out there she mentioned. I can't remember what it was, but she was very heavy on conservation for farming um, and leaning towards technologies, but letting the task force find the solutions for that. And the task force will be given the job of trying to find the funding um, to get these things done. 
versus Kerry Lake. Kerry Lake is kind of she's kind of throwing everything out there to see what sticks, from what I can see, and she's mentioning that she wants to do just about everything. Depends on how much money that she has. Katie Hobbs goes on to say that there is a lot of grant money out there that's not being utilized, and we've mentioned that here on the show before that there's grant money right down to your local AHA, HOA to help them get to Desert Escape. They're just not doing a very good job of getting the word out on how you can get that. And so when I look at both candidates, if I were really to draw a line and say the difference between the two, Katie Hobbs is strong on conservation. Carrie Lake is strong on conservation. Katie kind of glosses over a little bit and says she's got a task force that's going to work on it. Carrie Lake goes into great detail on what she wants to do, and it may just be a difference in how they write. It looks like the writings on Carrie Lake's was done by her, and the writing on Katie Hobbs was done by one of her staffers, just when you look at the verbiage. In other words, Carrie would say, I would do this, I would do that. You get over to Katie Hobbs, and they would go, well, Katie would do this, Katie would look at that. So a little bit of difference there. While they're both the same on conservation, um, I think Carrie Lake is putting forth some really bold concepts, like the pipeline and water desalinization. Katie's saying, well, we're going to let the task force look at that. So that's where our two gubernatorial candidates come in, and we'll watch this uh, um you know, over the next few years, you know, they've got to do something. And uh, right now, you know, we did have a good wet summer. It's just a shame that we weren't able to capture all that water. But uh, we're getting there and we'll continue to watch. And hopefully they'll find a solution for our water problems here in Arizona. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.